respectfully, I think that there is hardly a sequence that builds and matures believers. So we have believers who just shadow box and guess their way to spiritual growth. Some are fortunate, like those who are under an assembly like this, to find visionary leaders who can build them sequentially. But unfortunately, not many have that privilege and that opportunity. So you see that there are gaps in the experience of many believers. Please pay attention. Hallelujah. There are many well-intentioned believers who are not able to rise to the fullness of their prophetic potential. And the reason is not rebellion on their own part. It's just that they've not had the opportunity to be exposed to, number one, the whole counsel of God. And then, number two, a sequential arrangement, a, sequent a mentorship system that is able to capture all the dimensions that are required for the spiritual growth and the excelling of a believer. Are we together? So conferences like this are an attempt to bring the counsel of God to believers to the end that we be established. The Bible says it was for this cause he gave unto some apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the equipping, the maturing of the saints. And so I pray that the Lord will grant us grace. And I pray that this, this conference will really add to our spiritual growth. That it will not just be a ritual that we honor the conference, but that from the depth of our heart, it will be a defining moment. If you're in agreement, please say amen. amen. Help us, Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Please read with me if you can see it projected. Ready? One, two, read. And now, brethren, I commend you to God, mm. uh -huh. which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them. Please keep that scripture there. Paul is speaking now. He says, and now, brethren, I commend you. I hand you over. Follow his discourse. I hand you over first to God. Everybody say to God. And then to the word of his grace. Notice his sequence. I desire that you be built up. I desire that you possess the realities of this kingdom. But this is the formula. I hand you over, number one, to God. Then number two, to the word of his grace. That if it is true that you are handed over to God and you are handed over to the word of his grace, there is a guarantee that you will be built up and then you will be given an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So it then means that if a believer is not built up, if I cannot trace maturity and growth, if I cannot trace results in your life, the Bible already has diagnosed that condition. That the condition is telling you that you have not truly met God and you have not truly met the word of his grace. Are we blessed? Hmm. Now, brethren, I commend you. I hand you over to God and then I hand you over to the word of his grace. That means if you start your pursuit and all you are just looking for is word, word, word. Something will still happen to you. Because the scripture testifies of a person. So he says, I hand you over. You need an encounter with this person for what he has said to make sense to you. Are we together now? It is amazing that many, many believers, I say this sincerely, many believers have truly not met God. Neither do they know him. And not knowing God, especially at times like this, can be risky and can be dangerous. So I thought to start my session challenging us on this issue of the knowledge of God. There is a level of stability and confidence that comes to the life of the believer when you truly know God. 
Can we discuss knowing God for a few minutes? While you're writing, please pray. Reveal yourself to me, O oh God. Reveal yourself. The knowledge of the holy. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning, God. Please read with me the first four words. In the beginning. One more time. Not ambition. Not vision. In the beginning of anything, God. This is the spiritual sequence. In the beginning of my destiny, God. In the beginning of my business, God. In the beginning of the year, God. In the beginning of my family life, God. In the beginning of my pursuit, God. In the beginning of anything, God. It is a position that his jealousy protects. If at any point you just put him in the middle of your pursuit, that, that, that violation to divine sequence will have a side effect in your life. Not in the middle, God. In the beginning, God. So the foundation for a believer's experience is God. Not just vision, not just purpose, as powerful as they are. Not ambition, not money, not a desire for success. In the beginning, God. John 17, please. For my eyes have seen the King, you're the Lamb upon the throne, you reign forevermore. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forevermore. John chapter 17, Jesus is praying. We'll read the first three verses. John 17 and verse 1, the Bible says that Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, now Jesus is praying, Father, the hour is come. Glorify now thy son that thy son may glorify you. Verse 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. If you are a Christian, please read verse 3 with me. One to read. And this is eternal life. Uh -huh, that they might know thee. And Jesus whom thou hast sent. Please look up. Wow. So eternal life. is not just the arrival of the life of God in a believer. That begins the journey. It is a journey that explores the person of God and his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus himself is speaking. Not some prophet, not some apostle. He said, this is eternal life. Please keep that scripture there. That they may know thee. This is eternal life. The experience of eternal life is at work in me to the degree to which there is a hunger and a passion and a drive to know you the only through God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. It was Prophet Jeremiah in chapter 9. Prophet Jeremiah, please write the scriptures down. Chapter 9 from verse 23 and 24. This is a word conference. It says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. 24. But let him that glorieth glory in these. This is the pride of the believer in this kingdom. That he understandeth and knoweth me. So if ever there is a reason to boast. Is that I know this God. If ever there is a reason to stand tall. And to speak to be vocal about this faith life. 
that more than just the pride in achievements and all of these things as good as they are, that the real pride of the believer is that he knows God. Are we together? Hmm. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2. Apostle Paul mentoring his church is his son in the gospel. 12. I meant to say 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. 1 and verse 12. It says, For which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Why? For I know whom I have believed. I have not only believed him, I know whom I have believed. Remember what Jesus told the Samaritan woman at the well. He said, you worship what you don't know anything about. You were just introduced into a ritual, but we know whom we worship. There is no religion I know where intimacy and relationship is a requirement. Only the faith life. When you go to a herbalist, you don't even need to know his name. He will just ask you, what is your problem? This, buy the chicken, buy the goat, drop the money, save Johnny with whatever you are given. He's not interested in a relationship. Every other religion emphasizes rituals and tries, it prides itself in the distance between that deity and the man. But the faith life is predicated upon a desire to know God as mysterious as he is he desires to be known and that our strength and our confidence our stability in this kingdom is predicated on the knowledge of the holy are we blessed Daniel chapter 11 a popular scripture and verse 32 Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. The B part says, but the people, hallelujah, I'm part of that list, but the people that do know their God, two things will happen to them in this kingdom. Number one, they will be strong. And then number two, they will do exploits. The people that do know their God, even at times like this, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So we're going to examine very quickly four platforms for knowing God. It is important that we strive by the grace of God to come into this comprehension of this one that we call God. And there are four platforms. Listen, when you understand this, you can get someone saved and literally walk him through the pathway, the path that leads to spiritual growth. And you can guarantee that if you follow that path, you will become matured in the things of God. But the people that do know their God, no matter how weak they are, if they do press to know him, they will be strong and they will do exploits. Are we together? Number one, the first platform that helps the saints to know God is the scripture. The first biblical platform. Please pay attention. The scripture. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16. The scripture is the first authorized platform. Now listen. The realm of the spirit, I, I would want to add this very quickly. The realm of the spirit is a vast realm. And there are many ways of routing the realm of the spirit, both authorized and unauthorized. There are people who have found themselves interacting with the realm of the spirit, but not by the road that was defined. So Jesus said, I am the door. He didn't say I'm the only access point. I am the door. If a visitor comes through your house by jumping through your window, he's in your house, but he's not welcome. Are we together now? You open the gate and the door to demonstrate and communicate your receiving that person. So many people have learned many spiritual things but have not routed their pathway, the path to their knowledge through scripture or from God's authorized channels. Our desperation, if not guided, 
will lead us into several things. That's why today in the body of Christ, there is a mix of all kinds of things. Scientology, there is a mix of spiritism. There is a, some of these things came from the desperation of people who desire to know this God. But because they, they didn't pay attention to be mentored, to be shown the authorized access points. Their hunger led them to fasting and prayer and they interacted with strange beings and strange spirits and came down with messages that look spiritual but negates the pathway. So you find out that the more they are spiritual, the more you see a deviation from the image and the character of the Christ. Are you blessed? Our desperation must be managed and we must be shown the authorized pathways. We are not the first to take on this journey. The Bible says to follow them. There, there are some them who have gone ahead of us. Are we blessed? The Holy Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3, please. From verse 15 and 16. And that from a child, so the journey starts from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture. And the Bible says that the Holy Scripture are able to make you wise unto salvation. Wise unto salvation. You can be wise. There is the wisdom that leads to destruction. There is the wisdom that leads to salvation. Remember what Satan told, I mean, in, in, in Genesis. The fall of man. Satan came to him and said to eat of this tree. He says for it has the ability to make you wise. There is the kind of wisdom that the world gives. But this wisdom that comes through scripture is wisdom that leads to salvation. It is able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 16. It says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. So scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness to the end that the man of God may be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The agency that leads to this kind of man is the Holy Scripture. That it is able to impart wisdom that leads to salvation and then all scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness to the end that whoever engages it, if you follow that pathway of scripture, at the end you will be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Everybody say the scriptures. Hmm. I believe the Bible. Now, let me explain something. This Bible, from a human standpoint, has a lot of human imperfections. The vessels that wrote this thing, and then the committee that canonized this Bible, when you look from a human standpoint, you will see a lot of gaps, theologically speaking, and historically speaking. That means that the Bible is not just a book that you just look at as a novel. If you look at it without the assistance of the Holy Spirit, you will be surprised at the kinds of error you will draw from it. This book you see can be opened, but the seal must be unlocked for you to see. Are we together now? So just opening the Bible and reading it intellectually will do you no good. It is the reason why you can finish volumes of books bigger than this, yet it would take almost a lifetime to finish your Bible because there is a spirit behind it. Are we blessed? The Holy Scripture. When you look at Scripture from the lens of the Spirit, then you will learn the ways of God. What does the Bible provide? It reveals the character. Please write it down. Scripture reveals the character and the methodologies of the kingdom. When we study Scripture, the goal is not just to crime verses and to feel spiritual. No. The Bible is a revelation of the character of God. Everyone say character. 
The Bible is a revelation of the character of God. So that when you study through the stories, through the parables, from the Old to the New Testament, you would, you would like, like an artist working on your mind, he begins to paint a picture about the God of the Bible. So that everywhere you look, you look from the lens of the image that the Bible has created in your mind. I give you an instance. If someone comes to you now and tells you in the name of Jesus or by whatever prophecy, tomorrow your life is doomed. Now it does not matter what that person saw and he said, God said I should tell you this. You can say thank you. But there is something about the character of God that you know from scripture. That the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger. The knowledge of that character can veto any prophecy you have received. You can go to God on the strength of that which you know. And say God I do business with you. I know what you can say. And I know what you cannot say. In Isaiah 38 when the prophet came to Hezekiah. He said put your house in order. He was not a fake prophet. He said you will not recover. Isaiah said, I've heard you. God bless you. You have, go. I will turn to God and I know what to tell him. When you know God, it will give you stability in these evil times. You can get up from a dream that spells destruction and say, I know this God. I know what to tell him. He, 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 has, he has bound my relationship with him with such, such integrity that I, I know what to tell him. No wonder David was a man after God's heart. He would say, Lord, let me deal with you directly. These people are evil people. But with you, I know what to tell you. Hallelujah. The Holy Scripture. That means when a believer is not exposed to Scripture, he does not even have an idea of who God is. Even if you cannot see your pastor... When you hear his voice, you know, ah, this is his voice. Why? Because you have sat and listened to him again and again and again. You listen to the voice of your wife, your husband, your children. It's amazing how you can pinpoint their voices from, um, you know, several people speaking. That's how it is with God. The Holy Scripture reveals the character of God. Do you know... One of the ways you conquer fear is when you have a personal revelation of who God is. Just listening to people's opinion about God, today you will trust him, tomorrow you will distrust him. Today you will come into a point of certainty, tomorrow you don't know what to believe again. But I pray that in this conference, God will bring us to a place of persuasion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm. Scripture. Number two. The second platform for the knowledge of God are the names of God. The names of God. Scripture reveals his character and his methodologies. I think I should just, I should just back, back up a bit and, and explain uh, still a point that I made over the scriptures. The methodologies of God. Please look at me. In this kingdom, results are not as important as how they were gotten. It's not just to say, let me just get results. Uh -uh. For God's signature to come upon your result, his pathway must be followed. I told you the realm of the spirit can be routed by different agencies and you can obtain results. But if it is not by God, and by his ways, you do not have his approval on it. Even if it's a genuine result. Are we together now? Yes. So scripture reveals to us the ways of God. I give you an instance. There are many ways you can become wealthy and you can become blessed. Let's talk about finances. But God has a predefined formula that is revealed from scripture. Are we together now? And you see, the truth is that if you follow any pathway that is not of God, there will be a side effect waiting for you. There is God's way to wealth. There is God's way to happiness. There is God's way to influence. There is God's way to growth. There is God's way to every, the way of the Lord is revealed in Scripture. 
So when I'm studying my Bible, I'm not just being loyal to a ritual that I was born and a Christian family compelled me to continue honoring. I have come to a point where I, I want to know the character of God and I want to know his methods. There is God's way to church growth. There is God's way to making the nations hear your voice. If you do not follow his way, there will be side effects eventually that will not be worth that journey you took. Are we together? So let's go to the next point. The names of God. Exodus chapter 3, please. Shalabakuri atakata. If I were you, I would pray in the spirit for one minute while I'm just receiving this. Exodus chapter 3. Let's just pray in the spirit for a minute or two and then we continue. Exodus chapter 3 from verse 13. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. The second platform for encounters and, and the knowledge of God are his names. You would notice from scripture that every time they encountered God, they captured that experience in a name and they preserved it. So every time you wanted to learn about that dimension of God, you would come to that name. The name of God captures dimensions of him because you see, God is infinite and he is vast. So he decided to fragment himself into dimensions and those dimensions are captured in his names. One dimension of God you find will not reveal another dimension. Jireh will not reveal Rapha, but it is all God. Are we blessed now? Exodus chapter 3, please, from verse 15. And Moses said unto God, moreover, okay, and, and God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. I think we should go back to 13. We're doing 13 to 15. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, they shall say unto me, What is his name? What then shall I say unto them? Very wise man. God, I don't know you. You want to, you are sending me to represent a God I do not know. Life will ask me questions that only my knowledge of you will help me answer. You are sending me into the business world. You are sending me into ministry. When I stand before principalities and powers, who will I tell them sent me? When I step into the business world and I am not allowed to do certain things to make money and the spirits that control wealth in the cosmos that manipulates people to bow to Satan when they stand and say, who sent you? Who will you tell them had sent you? God, do not send me to Moses if you will not reveal yourself to me. I know what they will ask me. I was once there when I go back and I tell someone on a wheelchair, stand up, he will not just stand up just because I spoke. What about you must be revealed to me? Ah, someone well, right where you are, just lift your voice in one minute and pray. Lord, show me the dimension that my destiny needs in this season. Reveal to me a dimension of you. Let every other name fade away. Pray. Let every other name fade away until there's only you. Let every other name fade away. Are you praying? For some of you, it's Rafa. The ministry God has given you, He's given you a healing ministry. But do you know the God that heals? Do you know the God that heals? He's sending you as a financial apostle. Do you know the God that blesses? 
or do you just have business ideas? It will take more than a good business idea. It will take more than a good proposal. You will need to know the God that lifts. God is sending you into leadership. Do you know the God that makes man? The maker of the heavens and the earth. Is someone praying? Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Hallelujah. Listen. You must catch the dimension of God that your destiny requires. There is a name of God that will support your assignment in life. Make sure you find it before that journey starts. You are a man of God. You must know the God who restores. You must know the God who can make men. You are a leader. If all you know is just the God that saves, congratulations, but you will fall short of your assignment. Life will ask you, who sent you? The names of God. The nation of Israel took time to study the names of God. As they sojourned from Egypt to the wilderness, every time they found the name of God, they would capture it. And they would give instructions and say, teach your children and your children's children. When they ask, why are we doing this? Tell them, once upon a time, God showed up in a certain way. We captured that experience. Any day you need him to show up like that again, call that name. Ah, that something happened in 2007. I would have died, but I called upon his name. Now that attack is coming again. That name is still there. The name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous can run. It's not just what I call. I can enter the name and I am saved. We know God when we know his names. There are names that God is called, oh, brothers and sisters. There, there are dimensions of his power invested in his names. When you call him faithful, he does something to you. When you call him mighty God, he does something to you. When you call him El Shaddai, he does something to you. We make miracle walk, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We call you, say, the miracle walker. It's no longer a song. You are calling him to your life. Waymaker, miracle walker. Light in the darkness. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? I will lift up my eyes to the hills, the psalmist said. From whence cometh my help? He says, my help. I don't know where yours comes from. But my help, even with the pandemic, my help comes from the Lord, not the landlord. The Lord who makes man, who makes heaven, who makes earth, who makes man. I tell you, I, I just sense a strong anointing just, just sweeping through this place. Can you pray in the spirit in one minute? I just sense that there's faith rising. Someone is shaking away every nonsense that the devil has spoken to you. Are you praying?
Lift your voice and pray. Shabaratosia. This is a word conference in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. You see, some of our mothers and our fathers, they didn't have the opportunity to go to school and to be intellectually enlightened as we are, but they knew something about God. Mama will get down on her knees and she may speak whether it's Yoruba or Igbo and call a name that she called before you were born. They vowed to her and they said, they said nobody gives birth in this family. And while she was fasting and praying, God came to her and gave her a name. He said, any day you are in trouble, call this name. Listen, your assignment is to use your life and give God a name that those coming towards you will study. He is not just supposed to stop as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It, the, the revelation of God to us, at the end of my life, I should be able to say I have seen God in this way and the generations coming, study this name. Study this name. Promise keeper, my light in the darkness, that is who you are. Listen. When you are in an uncomfortable situation, don't just cry and shout and say, God, oh, help me. That's an emotional prayer with no power. There is the name of God that is responsible. If someone is sick and dying, you don't need Jireh. No, you need Rafa. There is a name. Rafa, reveal yourself to me. It says, I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. By doing that, I shall be saved from my enemies. Call upon the name of the Lord. In one minute, you are going to call upon the name that you know so far. Some of you, there are names you have not called in a long time. That's why some doors have refused to open. Lift your voice in one minute. Whether you will say it in English, you will say it in your local dialect. Call that name again. The name you call him in your secret place. The name you call him before gates that refuse to open. The name you call him when it looks like your destiny is closing. Mighty God. Lift your voice and pray. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Time, lift your hands, lift your hands. You are, you are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I tell you, there's faith in this place. The third platform, very quickly. The third platform that helps the saints to know God. Is Jesus the Christ himself. Scripture revealing his character and his methods. His names revealing his dimensions. And here Jesus shows up as the express image of that invisible God. 
Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. The Bible calls Jesus the image of the invisible God. All oh, creation, this God that you've believed and you've had all kinds of opinions about. Now, someone has come in the flesh to personify and embody this invisible God. And he calls him the firstborn of every creation. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in this last day spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed to be heir of all things by whom he made the world. Verse 3, the Bible says, who being the brightness of his glory uh -huh, and the express image of his person. So Jesus came as a revelation of God. Jesus came as a correction of our opinions about God. He came so that we can now have a standard to compare. We look at Jesus and compare with what we have known and heard about God. And everything that we have known that is not in Jesus Christ, it becomes our manual for editing our understanding. Until Jesus showed up, there were many things that were credited to God that God had no business with. It was the limitation of those who were mandated to interpret him at that time. Until Jesus came, all that they knew about God was a fierce deity who would burn with fire and brimstone over everyone and Jesus came as the expression of God. He revealed the love of God. He came to personify the scripture that said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. When he walked upon the earth, he demonstrated a dimension of love and ability and power that dumbfounded the scribes and the Pharisees who had learned him theologically. They could not reconcile what they had read for years now with this man. They were angry and said, this can't be God. God does not behave like this. God cannot love that far to finish a crusade now and sit down with only one woman talking with her with the same passion. No, the God we know is only interested in a crowd of people. I'm not sure he has that time to sit with just one person. And Jesus came as a correction of our mindset and our perception about God. So you want to know God, look at Jesus. The image, God personified. Are we blessed? First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. And without controversy, great is what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. What is that? God was made manifest in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels. He preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up to glory. God becoming a man in the person Jesus. Now listen please. God is not a man. Please say that. God is not a man. God only became a man. If you say God is a man, it means it's wrong to worship him. Because you don't worship the creature. God is not a man. God is God. He became a man to help men. Are we together now? Yes. Because there is a law in this territory that until you have a material body, you are illegitimate in this realm. So he had to wear a body. The word became flesh so that he can dwell among men. Then we beheld his glory, even as of the begotten, full of grace and truth. God is not a man. He became a man. Are we together now? And his becoming a man is powerful because he went back to heaven with his body. That is the guarantee that he's coming back. If he went without his body, we will not trust his returning because where will he get a body from again? Are you seeing now? We believe he's coming because he went back with his body. So he will still honor the law of territory when he's returning because he has the body he will use to return with. 
Now he does not need a virgin to give him a body again. He's seated as the man, Jesus. We know. So anytime you say he's coming back, it's not just because people said he's coming back. He has fulfilled the law that allows his entrance here again. Today he's seated on the throne with his body, the man, Jesus. But he is God. You're not a man, no. You're not a man. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. He's not a man, no. You're the God of everything, no one like you. That is God for you. His personal name was given to Moses called Jehovah. It's the Hebrew word Y-H-W-H. yad he wah -He. It was his personal name. Do you know what that name meant? The one who brings into existence. That's it. The one who brings into existence. The one who is responsible for manifesting anything. So when he says, I am that I am, is, it was such a sacred name, the Jews did not even mention it. The names of God. Is someone blessed? That you can go and study the names of God and match it to the challenges that you have in your life. Now Jesus came. You see why the name of Jesus is powerful? Because he came to embody everything that God was. So whether it is Rafa, you say, Jesus, you are right. Whether it's Jaira, you say, Jesus, you are right. Whether it's Sikenu, you say, Jesus, you are right. Someone shout, Jesus. Jesus. Shout that name. Say, Jesus. Jesus. In ancient times, you had to qualify the need. Jehovah Jaira. Jehovah Rafa. And Jesus was given a name. You now see what happened in heaven. All those names as a reward were given to him an office the bible says that name was given exalted above every other name that at the mention of that name when you invoke that office hmm. jesus the revelation the complete revelation of god next time you see it's because we don't have this knowledge so when you say jesus to a situation your ignorance is glaring in the realm of the spirit and so there is no power of performance. But now you go back after this conference and shout Jesus. You know what you are saying. Jesus means Rafa plus Jaira plus Sikenu plus every other thing. You're the God of everything. Someone shout Jesus. Over your health, shout Jesus. Jesus. Over the pandemic, shout Jesus. Jesus. Over that situation that has mocked God in your life, shout Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, the embodiment, perfect theology, God made manifest. Can you spare me five more minutes? The last dimension or platform, the last platform for knowing God. This is very personal. It's called your experience. Hmm. There is a dimension of God that only your experience can teach you. Job 42 and verse 5. Please read it if you're a Christian. One to read. But now my eyes, you can doubt what you hear, but you cannot doubt what you see. I've heard of you. They've said a lot of things, but now my experience, my experience has revealed a dimension of you. First John chapter one and verse one. The epistle of John, 1 John chapter 1. It says, that which was from the beginning, which we have, help me, which we have seen with our eyes, 
which we have looked upon and then now our hands have handled. Everybody say experience. experience. When God wants to use you to reveal a dimension of him, it is very usual with God that somewhere in your experience there will be an event that will practically bring you to a point where you will need that dimension of him yourself and when you are now delivered from that dimension it strengthens your conviction you ask almost anybody that truly works in the healing anointing they will tell you a time came in their life there was a report there was a situation they were left face to face with their sermons it was a defense and when God brought them through it they said now I know God heals I know from scripture I know from his name I saw Jesus healed but my life now is a testimony when people speak from the standpoint of their experiences it comes with a conviction that is compelling Knowing a theoretical God is very risky. You must trust God for an experience with God. Do you have an experience with God that gives you the confidence that you have? Your experience is not the ultimate basis of your knowledge of God, but it is a powerful support system. I know whom I have believed. I am persuaded. When Daniel was at the lion's den, when he came out of that den, I can tell you that his conviction, his persuasion, everything changed. Your pastor, if you would ask him, he would tell you that his sojourn in this life so far, he has experienced so many things and has required the hand of God, the good hand of God upon his life at several instances. Do you know that most hymns, you know why hymns are powerful? Because most of them were not those special numbers. Many of them were experiences of people. They saw the deliverance of God. They saw several things. So even though the people are long gone, the hymns have refused to die. Your experience. There are people through this pandemic, they've gone through things financially, health-wise. They've survived what people said could not be, they could not survive. And so when they pray, they don't pray like 2019 again or 2018. When they say, my father, my healer, it's not just our father like a religious prayer. They know what they are saying. Hallelujah. That he showed up for you in a way, showed up for your children, showed up for your family. Your company said, look, just consider yourself gone. And you went to him and said, Lord, you are the restorer. And after two weeks, they called you like they've never done in the history of that company. The next time you are reading, I will restore the years. You will believe it because you have an experience that can relate with that. Do you know why you know that Amala is delicious? The things you saw, the things you had from your mother, somewhere along the line life gave an opportunity for your hands to handle it now you believe now you believe are we together it is risky to just see and hear you must trust God to bring you to a point where you experience it there are things I know today I will die believing because my life is a testament of it The knowledge of the holy. Scripture revealing God and helping us know him. The names of God capturing different dimensions of him that educate us and teach us who God really is. Then Jesus, the embodiment of God in the flesh. And then your experience. Follow this pathway and you become a dangerous human being, positively speaking on earth. Nothing will move you. You will stand unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. This is what this generation needs more than any other thing. Conviction. That you can stand and say, I know God 
and 20 years later you are still saying I said the same thing I'm still saying the same thing our vacillations are proof that we know a theoretical God and God is calling us in this conference I'm lending my voice with all other speakers who have been communicating dimensions of the kingdom to call us back to the place of certainty the knowledge of God please if you are in ministry hear this the days that are coming will require more than the ability to speak well. It will require more than the ability to just manage and, and administrate properly. You will have to stand upon the platform of conviction because life is coming to test conviction. The Bible says if you fall in the day of battle, it is proof that your strength is small. Is someone ready to pray? Do you like prayer? Please rise up on your feet. I have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen you. I commend you to God and then to the word of his grace it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance hallelujah prayer point number one you are going to cry to the Lord God of heaven that he would reveal himself in a personal way and in a definite way to you it's he said call on to me and i will answer i will show you i will show you it doesn't have to be a supernatural encounter but it must be an encounter that creates persuasion and conviction are you ready to pray please lift your voice in one minute and pray your destiny will require this sermon. The days ahead will require the knowledge of this sermon. I commend you to God. I commend you to God that scripture reveals. I commend you to God revealed through his name. I commend you to God revealed through the person Jesus. I commend you to God revealed through your experiences. Don't be tired. This is a word conference. You are investing in prayer. You are sowing in the spirit. Are there people of prayer here? We give ourselves to the ministry of the word and of prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The next prayer point is said, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. You're going to cry to the Lord. Create conviction. I'm tired of believing this today. And doubting what I believe tomorrow. I'm tired of allowing fear. I watch a news and in five minutes I'm afraid. There's something about God that must give me stability. Listen. Please look up. I'm still establishing the second prayer point. Did you know that because of the pandemic and all that has happened around all through 2020... You know, there are people today, people have committed suicide by themselves. There are people today who have had all kinds of sicknesses that are directly fear-related. Are we together? I'm not even talking of corona. No, not at all. High blood pressure. How will my life be? How will I feed five children? How will I feed... I mean, will I, 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 do I know what tomorrow brings? You find rest when you know God. So you are going to pray. Lord, 
take away fear from my life by giving me convictions. Convictions about God, the integrity of his person. Lift your voice and pray. Strengthen my faith. Grant me conviction. I reject fear. Fear of the future. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now you're going to pray. You're going to call every month of 2021. Call it by name and send words of faith. Are we together? From January, February. Please don't be quiet. These are times when you should not be quiet. You should not be quiet. Call the months and declare. Bless them with the name of the Lord. January, I place the name of the Lord upon you. February, my God goes before me. March, someone is praying. I declare tragedy free in the name of Jesus. Failure free in the name of Jesus. Full of wisdom, full of grace, full of exploits, triumph, victory by the Spirit. Someone is speaking over his ear. Recreate your ear, prophesy. Those following online, go ahead and pray. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.